Now you don't very often see a massive knot in woodwork like that on a stock. That is pretty, pretty nice actually. That'll probably increase the strength of the wood or would it not? I don't know. It looks very nice though. The stock is by the way, walnut on this Reximex zone. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and Welcome to the full review of the Reximex Zone Sub-12 PCP UK spec this one is and if you look through previous videos, Reximex videos I've done a few Reximex videos on the channel uh, over the years didn't really know what to expect with this um, I thought, Man, okay, it looks, looks interesting I often say it Thin wood on stocks it always makes me cringe a little bit. I just think, God, if that breaks, that's it. Your stock is done. But apart from that, that's probably just getting out my first gripe. But what did impress me with this, and yeah, and I know I'm, oh God, I'm losing my voice already. Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, and I know I'm a lefty, and this is right handed gun, so I was having to take my face off the stock to sort of cock it. Yeah, all right, I could have shot it right-handed, but uh, I shot it left-handed. What I must say about this rifle is it is one of the smoothest side lever cocking actions I have used on a rifle. It is super, super smooth. It's unbelievable. It's just totally slick. Doesn't matter what type of pellets you're using, and I used a few. It was just super slick to cock really really nice now let me throw out a few specs about this rifle like i said Rexmex zone sub 12 this rifle is this one is in 177 your magazine capacity is 14 shots in the 177 or 12 shots in 22 running at about 11 and a half foot pounds uh i did a crow i don't know whether i chronoed this i will chrono it i'll throw in the results Shot count in 2T, you're going to get about 75 shots. In 177, you're going to get 65-ish. Two-stage adjustable trigger, rifle barrel. Overall length is 90 centimetres or 900 millimetres. You old schoolers, what's that? I've got to get my tape out. 90 centimetres is 35 and a half inches thereabout. Barrel length is 58 centimetres or 580 millimetres. And that is uh, just under 23 inches. And the weight, oh, I'm not going to, you guys will have to convert this. 3.3 kilograms. And that's pretty much it for your specs. Now, let's have a closer look at this rifle then. So, bullpup configuration because the magazine and bear in mind the barrel is long i mean the barrel's going all the way there you have got a, like a shroud i've thrown on a little uh hug it uh belito or belito what are they belito i think it is i think that one is yeah it, i don't know it just seemed to work well with that barrel shroud it's virtually the same size so it looks pretty cool on that so, like i say real long barrel side lever cocking there is your oh by the way this is regulated as well this rifle is that is your cylinder going the full length there's your manometer there uh, oh is that your manometer yeah that one is your yeah that's your manometer yeah, just showing how much um in fact no that is the regulator sorry that's your regulator uh, gauge there your fuel gauge Get it right, right? Come on now. Is there at the end of the um, the end of the cylinder to fill this rifle up? You just basically take this quite heavy-duty aluminium with nice sort of grip on it to sort of turn it. Uh, you have to take that off, and you just fill her up. There's your filler port there. So let's put that back on. So that works nice. Uh, stock end, going from the stock end then. We're sort of bouncing all around this thing. I do love that knot right in the middle of, 
of the stock. That's really cool. It's like a perfectly chosen bit of wood there, I think. It's really cool. So you've got a hard rubberized uh, stock pad there with like, it's almost like a tire textured finish. I don't know what, what you call that. Um, but it works. It's nice and grippy. It is pretty ambidextrous. The cheek piece is uh, not adjustable. So the, what you have got to bear in mind and with any gun wear or any rifle where the cheek piece is pretty much level with the Picatinny rail. And as you can see, this has got a Picatinny rail. You've got to have high mounts to sort of just bring up the scope, you know, the your um, your eye relief and, you know, so you can basically see through the scope. Else, if, what you'll find is if it's low down, you ain't going to be able to look through the scope very well. So generally, a cheek piece that is level you know pretty much like this on a rifle like this you're going to want high mounts just just a point there just in case you're wondering that is an element titan uh, scope just a test scope i chucked on this rifle uh, to see what it was doing uh, what probably probably a bit beef do you reckon it's a bit beefy for this rifle i don't know it works well it does make it a little bit top heavy to be fair um uh, now the stock Turkish Walnut, I like it. They always seem a little bit unfinished, I think. You know, the Reximexes, the Krowls, pretty much any Turkish, I don't know what it is, any Turkish gun. Sometimes, quite often the shotguns as well. The Turkish Walnut just seems like it needs to be finished. It needs some oil rubbing in it or, I don't know. It just it just seems a little un unfinished to me. So if this was mine, I'd be... I'll be rubbing something into that uh, wood just to protect it even more. Probably don't need it, but it is what it is. As you can see, all wooden uh, stock here. You've got like these vents along there. It looks nice, uh, just for just for show, really. Uh, so that's kind of cool. You have got uh, a brass sort of. Uh, screw in there that you can take out or screw something into just to uh, give yourself the option of putting a bipod on there myself i'd probably put a bit of picatinny rail um but that's just me adjustable power setting i don't think that's really applicable on the sub 12 the cocking lever like i said super super smooth it is so smooth not rattly or anything is there's no up and down wiggle in that really nice the only thing i'd probably say about it is it probably just wants a bit more of a chunkier handle but other than that rock solid absolutely rock solid no no wiggly up and down decent solid linkages seems pretty good my only gripe well i've got two gripes pretty much with the uh the rex max zone is it's not really a gripe, it's just a worry. It's a concern. The thin bit of wood here on the stock, in, you know, like synthetic rifles, for example, that wouldn't bother me. With wood, it does. It just, I don't know, I just think if that gets a bit of a knock, it's going to bust. It probably won't. It's probably just as tough. And you know what I'm going to say, guys? The safety catch in the trigger guard. I always hate that. I don't know, just put it somewhere else. But you've probably not got many options on this rifle with it being a wooden stock but other than that pretty damn impressive trigger uh, this is cocked as well i am aware of it so you've got a nice trigger blade on there slightly adjustable trigger blade as well so that's pretty cool let's give the trigger a pull while it is cocked and we'll see what it is doing. So, let's get my trigger pull ready. Oh, it does tell you as well, it's got safe and fire um, sort of etched in to the woodwork there. Just so that you know. Let's put it in fire mode. And we'll give this trigger a pull. Ooh. One pound, two and a half ounces on the trigger pull. Nice trigger, I've got to remind myself of that. And with this little uh, hug it on it, it's super, super quiet. Oh yeah, that is silent, silent. 
So, how did it go on accuracy? Well, pretty damn well. And then before I jump into that, I'll just clock the magazine. So magazines, nice and easy to load. You, you, you know, your normal sort of clockwork ones that we're all used to now. I had no issues with these magazines either. You load them up by, well, you load up your magazine in the conventional way. And then I think it, it's, it has got a last shot stop on it as well. But I can't remind myself how did I load these in. That's it, they literally load in like that. And that's, that's what you see. So nice and easy. So let's just fire that off. Really cool, really cool. So reliable magazines, I had no issues whatsoever. I had no problems with any of the pellets that I put in the magazines um, with loading or anything, no grunchiness on loading. Uh, you sometimes get that. I found that in high-end rifles where if the pellet you're using is slightly longer or shorter, it, it, as you close the, um, the cocking lever and the probe pushes the pellet out of the magazine into the barrel where there can be a little bit of a gap, the pellet will drop down. And if, I don't know, it just feels like you're damaging the, the pellet. Anyway, let's move on to accuracy then. So, this is how it did. And I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of pellets. Here we go. First pellets I did use, or first type of pellet I did use, was the good old H&M Field Target Trophy for testing. My, my pretty much go-to pellet for uh, initial zero. So a zero with these. I think, did I zero with them? Thereabouts anyway. Here are my groups, 30 yards off a bench. I don't know what happened there, They but they all went through one hole. All I'm bothered about is sort of consistency and accuracy, 30 yards. H&M Field Target Trophy, 8.44 grain. Then I went on to the JSB Hades. These are usually quite good but i don't know it's a little bit weird um don't know a little bit erratic uh, i did give the about the barrel just a, a quick swab out and i mean it was a quick swab out brand new rifle from factory so jsb hades mm, spread out a little bit and then they all went into one hole then they spread out again then into one hole and then, so that was a little bit weird. Don't know what was going on there. Then, QIS. These are the um, 8.48 grain, the QIS. These are a great palette. These were pretty good. Okay, now bear in mind, guys, I didn't re-zero. Once I zeroed with the field target trophy, I just I was aiming at the, the bullseye. I didn't sort of re-zero for each palette. One old group there. So bear in mind this is a new rifle. It's probably got a little bit of muck in the barrel. Um, and plus it needs leading up as well. So you've got to bear, in, bear that in mind. Then JSB Exact. Uh, 8.44 grain. That was them. Kind of like these. Nice group there. Okay, decent. Then the Norma uh, Golden Trophy Field Target. Again, these are a quality pellet. Nice. Bit of a straggler there. That's the Norma pellets there. And then, what do we go on to then? Air Arms Diablo field they were 8.44 grain i think those ones are so 8.4 grain look at that group one hole decent groups with the diablo field and then last but not least barracuda match from h&m 
these are a decent pellet 10.4 five grain a little bit heavier so dropping down a little bit lower still group decent look at that that is one hole one hole there so overall pretty decent pretty decent if you want to pause this video and sort of take a look at those groups then please feel free but for a brand new rifle like i said that's not leaded up probably still got a bit of battery crap in the barrel that i've not managed to get out that is decent for a pretty affordable rifle i'm not going to give the price you, you know if you want prices on stuff just google it google is your friend because prices never stay the same that's why i don't generally give prices on a video so for the cost of this rifle you know something like an fx equivalent to this is probably going to be twice as much that is decent that is decent super slick to use good looking traditional walnut I don't like that bit, but I think it'll be fine. Didn't show you this, the uh, checkering on the stock there, which is nice. Accurate, nice long barrel, super consistent. Nice rifle. I was suitably impressed with this gun. I really was. Let's move the pellets out of the way. Let me show you the box. So here is the box, cobble box, oh I'm knocking my lights over, what do you get in there, you get, you get your box of bits here, just see what else is underneath, so oh well no need for me to chrono it because it's already been done this particular rifle, so oh very consistent, just pause that if you want to have a look at the readouts. I like that. That is a nice touch from uh, Rexmex. The way they do that. Spare magazine. You get your single. You get a single shot tray. Do you? Looks like a single shot tray. Set of Allen keys. There's your probe. Bit of Picatinny right as well. So that looks like what I was suggesting. It's already supplied. So a bit of Picatinny rail. Get a big Allen key there. Get some targets. Here's the manual. Decent manual, all in colour, easy to read. How to load your mags. That is a decent manual. Are there any exploded diagrams? Come on now. <gasps> yes, there you go, look at that. A full parts list, love it. Decent manual, so I'm impressed. I am impressed with this rifle for its price point decent got a bit of a let's have a look at this so we've got a brochure here kindly on loan from range right by the way full range of the reximexes you have seen a few of these on the channel i think i've had the ixias on here uh there's some ones that are some that i haven't i have had the pretenses on there pretenses i've had them on there i've had the regime if i had the myth i think i've had the myth on here uh, a cura mm, yeah i think i've had that on there as well my toe they've been on i'm just making sure i've covered them all meta hmm maybe that have i had that one hmm not sure but anyway but that's the box anyway but no decent little well not little but a decent rifle accurate good looking uh I think the stock just needs finishing off. If it was mine, I'd really be sort of, uh, you know, oiling this up or waxing it or whatever. But what a nice rifle. And me being a lefty, I could put up with it. It was, it was, you know, with the, the cocking lever being on that side. Can you swap it around? Oh, do you know what? You can actually swap it around. Rack, why didn't you swap it around? Oh, I know, yeah. All right, well, there you go then. Totally ambidextrous rifle. So don't be put off if you are a lefty because you can swap it around. There you go. So quarter adjourned. Anyway, 
I am going to leave it at that, guys. That is your full rack review of the Reximex Zone. It gets a thumbs up from me. Nice, decent, tough, smooth to operate PCP rifle, sub-12. It'd be interesting to get an FAC version. Hmm, that would be a nice one to get on the channel. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching, guys. That is Rack and Load. See ya.